came into the waterhole setting is that the teeth can be grouped in discrete age classes. We have jaws that have teeth representing babies, uh, middle-aged mammals, and old adults. The only way that you could find discrete age classes in a mass of rhinoceros bones like this is if the rhinoceroses were all birthed at about the same time. So we think that this was a herd that came into the water hole and died in this uh, very shallow body of water over uh, a period of just weeks to months. The herd resurfaced on a cattle ranch. A cowboy found what looked like the petrified bones of Indian ponies. Instead, they were monoceros. With this bonanza of fossils, Bob Hunt has learned not only why monoceros died, but how it lived and what it looked like. These were very long-legged rhinoceroses, uh, perhaps a little more long-legged proportionally than the modern rhinos that the average person is used to seeing. These rhinos may have existed in herds very similar to zebra and wildebeest in East Africa today. For several million years, Monoceros was the sole rhino in America. Then, 18 million years ago, it vanished, just like its predecessors. A million years later, a new proto-rhino arrived from Asia, Teleoceros. With its barrel-shaped body and stubby legs, it looked more like a hippo. On the path of evolution, Teleoceros would be left by the wayside. The story of the rhino in North America ends in eastern Nebraska. Here lie hundreds of victims of a volcanic eruption in the mass graveyard called Rhino Pompeii. Uncovered by Mike Voorhees in 1978, it's one of the rarest fossil sites in the world. I had no idea at the time that this would be the first of more than 200 skeletons that lay buried at the bottom of this ash bed. Teleoceros looked more like a hippo than a rhino and acted like one too. It lolled around water holes sharing them with other beasts that seem more at home in Africa. To a paleontologist, this is an amazingly interesting place to work. We have essentially a snapshot of a moment in time 10 million years ago, revealing things like the fact that rhinos and, and uh, camels and three-toed horses lived here that probably most Americans have, have no idea of once inhabited our, our landscape. We're just scratching the surface here. Uh, the skeletons that we see before us in this building are less than 1% of, uh, of the total fossil deposit. So I'm looking forward to finding out what is around the next bend of the water hole. What lay around the bend was the last step in the long odyssey of the American rhino. A new journey would begin and lead the rhino back to Africa. For almost 50 million years, the ancient rhino thrived in North America. Then, five million years ago, it suddenly disappeared. Mike Voorhees, who found the fossil graveyard of rhino Pompeii, hunted for the answer. His search ended just four miles away at a gravel pit called Big Springs. With his wife Jane, Voorhees sought traces of rhinos. And no. <laughs> <laughs> they found nothing, and that was the answer. Five million years ago, glacial rivers began to deposit gravel like this all across the Great Plains. We know that the climate had changed. When we search these beds for fossils, we find no remains of rhinos or other critters that would have required a tropical climate. We therefore think that the Great Ice Age dealt the death blow to all North American rhinos. Yet, once again, nature wasn't through with the rhino. The beast died 
but the design survived. A hundred thousand years ago, during the last ice age, a new rhino appeared in Asia on the cold steppes of Siberia, Elasmotherium. As big as an elephant, it had a skull almost four feet long and a horn more than six feet long. When the ice age ended 10,000 years ago, it melted away. Now, the rhino is making its last stand. As a paleontologist, I can witness in the rocks the great success that rhinos have had on, on the planet Earth. Uh, it disturbs me deeply that we may be the last generation to see rhinos alive. My wife and I saw a single female rhino in Amboseli Park in Kenya a couple of years ago. It just broke my heart to, uh, to think that, uh, that these great creatures uh, could perish from the Earth and uh, we can do something about it. Five species of rhino survived the slow walk into the present. Yet in our lifetime, poaching has driven the rhino to the brink of extinction. Poachers themselves are now fair game, yet the killing goes on. Rhino looks out of place, an artifact from a time long gone, a time only the rhino remembers.